Galena garage in Huntley doesn't have E5 super unloaded. Tesco in Huntley doesn't have E5 super unloaded. Go figure! So I think we'll have a little run up to Keith. See if they've got some there instead. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Tesco petrol station at Keith has E5 super unloaded. It always jumps that extra penny, doesn't it? So, what can we say about the GSXR 1000R as we trundle through Keith on a very autumnal day? Um, well, ambient air temperature gauge, you one thing. Um, it's actually come up three, four, five degrees since I left the house. It was uh, about nine degrees there thereabouts, um, which is quite handy actually having that. So yeah, it's 14, currently 14 degrees. Um, bike's doing about 48 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. Being ridden like Miss Daisy, um, it has gone over 50. Depends how you ride it. I actually came back last night in the rain, um, in the rain and in the dark. Having, uh, having been to see a mate and uh, yeah it wasn't intentional to come back in the dark I have to say and uh, the rain well that can't be helped I'm afraid but sometimes you decide that you know what you're going out I'm going out regardless of whatever the weather's doing and yesterday was one of those days so uh, decided this bike isn't going to be a garage queen it is going to get used um, it'll get used for touring and road use back road scratching track days the whole nine yards so no point in having these nice things sat in the garage. Might as well use it, get the enjoyment out of it. Um, likewise, so I understand people that buy them to put them in the garage just to look at. I totally get that. So yeah, so here we are. It's actually really comfy for me. Um, I would say it's more comfortable than my K8 GSXR 750 was, uh, regardless of the non-adjustable pegs, which is quite surprising really. Um, because uh, it would benefit, it would benefit from adjustable pegs if it had those, but it doesn't. But I dare say I'll be sticking rear sets on at some stage. Which way are we going to go? Yeah, let's go down the main road. Let's go this way. Bends and it just it just comes alive. Absolutely comes alive. That's actually a crack. It's just you can tell what it was designed for. Yeah, the road's still a bit damp. But the feedback for this bike's really good. It's so planted through the corners, it's like it's on rails. The weight, I was quite surprised. Actually, the, uh, the tyres, Bridgestone RS, RS11s, that they are, R11s, one of them. Yeah, Bridgestone RS11s, I'm sure they are. But uh, anyway, yeah, in the wet, I've got to say, last night it was cold, wet, dark. Surprisingly good, actually. Uh, taking it easy, riding up this day as you. Uh, normally do in the wet just kind of just chill out a little bit and you know ride riding at the speed limit within the speed limit of course as we do all the time it, uh, it was actually right um, I've got to say it's quite surprised pleasantly surprised in fact so yeah if you're uh, concerned about these tires in the wet then I've got to say that yeah 
anything that uh, even that was below you know that's below like, that was below 10 degrees as well and complain at all really can't complain at all so yeah tires are good comforts good it's just a pleasant place to be sit and ride it really is it's a it's, it's a cracking bike mirrors are good at all speeds they work uh, they work really well very clear very clear very stable they don't vibrate um, your hands in the wet seem to stay relatively dry uh, the headlight is fantastic um, LED headlight of course um, and it's uh, yeah, got a great, it's got a great throw spread of light. I was going to stop and take uh, take some footage, but um, to be honest, you can't really see anything. It's GoPro's not the best at night, so I just didn't bother. So I'll uh, I'll throw up a couple of pictures of it uh, of it on the drive after just throwing a hose over it instead. And this is the view. Yeah, it doesn't really tell you much, but all I can say is, to take it from me, that these LED, LED headlight on this, um, the throw on it is fantastic, and it's without a doubt the best headlight I've used, or experienced at night anyway. Um, I don't generally tend to ride at night much, but if that's something that you tend to do a lot of the time, then I can thoroughly recommend this bike, although I dare say most people generally won't be riding one of these at night, normally. I wouldn't really call it a commuter, but it will certainly do it. Suspension's quite firm. I would say it can be a little bit harsh on the road. But nothing that um, nothing that twiddling with the adjusters would sort out. And I guess probably you could say that well if you bought you know the new fireblade or whatever at 20,000 20, pounds plus, well like 23,000 pounds something dark, then you know, I guess that's where your money's going on the electronic suspension at a touch of a button, you can make it nice and comfy. Or we're going for a 17, 2017, 2018 blade, uh, which to me, to be honest, 17 to 19 is the best, yeah, is the best looking, um, much nicer, much nicer looking one than the, than the latest one. But that's my personal opinion. But not as comfy, takes too high for me. And this is actually really quite, this is really quite comfy. And it's just the character of the bike, you know, it's, it's typical Suzuki, that air. Just the quick shifter as well. Just awesome. And listen to that. I hope this is coming through all right. It's just epic. Absolutely epic. That's what it is. I love it. Absolutely love it. Just can't get up. I just can't get enough of this bike. I really can't. Since I bought it, since I bought it, all I want to do is ride it. I know it's the same for every new toy you get, but you know, and I, I absolutely love the 750, and I won't have a bad word said about them. They're really a cracking bike. As I covered in my uh, my previous video, you know they do have their do have their slight criticisms that uh, that are easy to easy to pick up on the swing arm. The swing arm, yeah, because have a bit more power. But I mean, you know, you are looking for specifically looking for fault. If you are specifically looking for fault on this. It'd be the same, you know. Uh, yeah, it could have adjustable foot pegs. Is the, is the first thing. The seat could be a bit softer. It uh, can be quite hard, but surprisingly, it's actually a really comfy bike to ride. I mean, I could easily go touring on this, and that's that's what I am planning on doing. I will do that with it. I will go touring. We'll do track days. No point in uh, no point in having it just to look at. It's just the experience of the sports bike, I think, and that's that's kind of why. I guess that leads me on to the reasons why I decided to go for another one. I mean, I, I absolutely love the 750. Um, but spending another £2,000 plus on it to do the suspension, £600, like I said before in my previous video, you know, you're talking £600 for a decent rear shock for it. You're talking over £1,200 for decent cartridges for it. 
for the suspension. So you're in a, you know, you're in a 2,000 pound plus. That's before, that's before you get into doing the, uh, you know, set of a set of rear sets. It's going to be 400 pound. Do the brakes as well because they were starting to go off even at Knock Hill. That's not really a, a circuit that's hard on brakes as such, but um, generally speaking. So yeah, you know, you're talking, you're talking the guts of, you're talking the guts of over 2,000 pounds, so. So yes, now we have this again. And it was an itch that's been needing to be scratched for quite some time, to be honest. I wanted, uh, so close to buy another GSXR with the 750. Um, previously I had one, I had a GSXR 1000R on order. Um, it's, it's, prior to its launch in 2017 and ended up going for um, a GSX-S 1000F because I wasn't redoing really the track days. was very close to buying a new GSX-R 750 in black and yellow um, but again I thought oh, I'm not redoing really track days so I don't need it. And to be honest since then I've just had a hankering for another sports bike. Um, do more track days, well the 750 is, was fantastic, it was a great bike, but a little bit limited, you know, a little bit a little bit flawed, you know, there's a few things there you could have, could have improved on, so the decision was made, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I'm running this in, in B mode, which is predominantly, uh, definitely, I would say I would definitely call it road mode, for me personally. A mode is just a little bit more instant and direct. It's just, yeah, you just touch the throttle and you're away. You know, it's got that urgency about it. It's not, the fueling by any, by any means is not jerky or hesitant at all. But the map, the map in A mode is, is definitely more, definitely more instant. The urgency's there, like, you know, you just got an instant pick up and go. Um, it's not snatchy, but it's just, yeah, there's, there's no, other, no other word to describe it really. The B mode is just a little bit softer. Um, kind of wind it on and it's a little bit a little bit softer on the on initial application of throttle which is quite like that it's a bit like a, a bit like a bungee rope by comparison like compared to A mode A mode's a little bit more digital B mode just gives you that little spongy sort of that spongy sort of feel flexibility I suppose in the fueling on the road, you don't want it to be breaking your neck straight away. You don't need that urgency. Oh, I just don't think I've ever been down this bit of road. So I'm sitting it with uh, touch control mode 5, level 5, which seems to be pretty much part of the course. I rode back in the rain yesterday and uh, no, on number seven, when I have to say I didn't notice much difference. Oh, it's only two stages, two stages more. But in the wet, in the dark at night, yeah. It's one of those touch controls these are more is. I don't really feel like I, I don't really feel like there's any difference. But five seems to be about right for the road, I think. Once I get it on track, start opening it up a little bit more. It'll be interesting to see what um, Be interested to see what, dif what differences there are. I mean, you can you can get it to come in quite early if you if you nail it out of corners on a on a damp road in uh, TC7. You do you do see the touch control light flickering, or you go over a bump sometimes. It will it'll cut in. But. So there. Anyway, I'll stop in a little while and um, stop in a little while and we'll have a quick wander around. The la ting tang, walla walla bing bang. This quick shifter is sublime. Up and down the box, in town, out of town. Oh. Yeah, it's a bit hard on the old bottom sometimes. Absolutely effortless. 
I do like this bike and the flipper. Awesome. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, ah, oh. fifth, fourth, third. It's just, it's mega. That's what it is. It's just mega. Yes, the hanging for a sports bike was just too much. And I'm glad I've come back to it. I really am. I love it. Absolutely love it. So here we are, so since I stopped I've done 50 miles and we're on 49 miles to the gallon. 49 miles to the gallon. I have a bike that's got 200 horsepower. <laughs> A genuine range of 150 miles. Showing there, I've got 111 miles to go. I've done 50, so yeah, it's easy achievable. Am I? No fair weather biking on this channel, let me tell you. Yeah, we're gonna get to smell some of the Glymphidic on route. So this is Dufton, home of the Glenfiddich distillery. Glendullen distillery. Oh yeah. Oh, if this was smell vision Oh, you can smell the hops. That's amazing. Distillation process. If you're a bit of Scotland, and you are up this neck of the woods, I highly recommend going to the distillery. That smell is to die for. Are you actually going to stop? Yeah, you weren't going to stop, were you? Oh. Yeah, it's not... It's not in its natural habitat on these roads, I have to say. It really isn't. Welcome to Dufton. Still can't get used to changing gear, going down the box at such a low speed without using the clutch. It's a bit unnatural. I'll tell you one thing though, people do notice you on this bike. I don't know whether it's the colour or whether it's the uh, or whether it's the headlights or the LED, the LED front light. But I tell you what, you really uh, people do. People do look at you, you are noticed, but you are seen, which can only be a good thing. Either that or it's exhaust, but I don't think it's that throaty. Really. My mate says it's louder than the 750 was, but I don't know, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced of that statement. Here we are. The Glenfiddich Distillery. The Grant and Sons. Gonna swing in here. Yes, we are. Let's swing. <coughs> here we are. Ooh. Not bad, that. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Lovely. She's a bit dirty. She's a bit of a dirty girl. Love it. Absolutely love it. It's superb. Superb. And the LED lights in the front there. Just uh, beautiful. I like them. Looks good. So yeah, headlight protector is uh, addition that I put on. Um, those headlights aren't cheap. I can't remember how much they were. Uh, I'll stick it up in the. Uh, I'll stick it up in the video, but. Uh, yeah, when I seen there's a tiny little stone chip out of it, I thought, yeah, that's that's guaranteed to be. Uh, I've put on the brake lever guard from Lytech Performance, which is good. Does the job. 
seems to. Uh, slight, it's a bit more vibration through the bars with the uh, without that bar end weight on there, but other than that, it's all right. Uh, the exhaust was already on it when I bought the bike. Um, Yoshimura Alpha Titanium, 900 pounds from Cal Sport. They are. I did a little bit of a, a little bit of research on one of them. Uh, what else have I fitted to it? Fit the Evotec, Evotec Performance Tail Tidy. Uh, the last one set a bit further back down here, and actually the number plate actually hit the tyre. So, um, yeah, slightly small plate, which probably would have helped, but I didn't like where the number plate was sitting. I uh, didn't think the angle was quite right, so I've moved that with the Evotec Performance Tail Tidy, and it's a lot better. Yeah, yeah there we go. A hugger, definitely needed. Although this one here, the person that's had it before me has obviously fitted one here that's, uh, I think it's a power, I think it's a power bronze rear hugger, or maybe a pyramid plastic, so I'm not sure, but either way, it's, uh, it looks cool with the grills on it, but it kind of defeats the purpose of fit in the first place, because all the mud and, mud and rubbish just hits the rear shock, as you can see there, so that'll be going, that's going for another one from pyramid plastics. Uh, other thing I've fitted is the bikey discount store. Quick release fuel cap off the 750. Fitted the tank pad, and I fitted the uh, the seat unit, uh, the pillion pillion pad cover. And other than that, that's it so far. It needs some uh, it needs some it needs some stomp grips or traction pads on the side there because it's quite it's quite slidey. The fact I keep putting wax on it to keep it nice and shiny won't be helping that at all, but. One likes to look after one's toys. LED lights all around. Love it. Absolutely love it. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll clean my helmet over here. That's one thing though, is that practicality wise, as you can see, pillion pads not very really big. And there's not an awful lot of space under here for much at all, other than a rag. And that is it. So it could do with like a sports rack or something, just to carry a little bag for, you know, puncture repair kit or whatever. Um, but with a nod to uh, other very well-known YouTubers, there's an awful lot of, uh, not a lot of space under there for a sausage and egg muffin, that's for damn sure. So yeah, let's give this Just polish my helmet. Give it a clean. Yeah, that'll do. Clean you as well. Yeah, that's the only thing that's probably lacking to be honest, is a bit of space. <coughs> bit of space underneath the uh, seat there to carry anything. By comparison, my mate's uh, 99. 99 blade, there's uh, loads of space under the seat of that. You get a whole picnic in there. Anyway, that should be that. Hopefully, it doesn't come flying off. Don't think it will. One thing I keep doing is. Uh, What I keep doing is touching the, I mean, the hazard light, because the hazards is where the start button should be on the 750, but it's actually there now, which is a bit weird. So, just takes a bit of getting used to. Quick start, 1,459 miles. Let's go. Walk around is done. Practicality side covered. I'm gonna have to get a sports rack of some sort, I think. I really am. Just cover just carry a little bag, puncture repair kit, another pair of gloves, something to clean the helmet. Because uh, that space underneath the seat's really not cutting it for me. I have to say. So we'll look into that. Maybe a tank bag or something. Something is needed. Peace out folks and we'll stay. We'll catch you later. Until next time. It's an absolute
Breakfast.